Greetings. I'm coming to you with some of my personal challenges living in Dakar. Keyword here is personal. Your experience in Dakar could be different. So I'll start with more infrastructural stuff. As someone born and raised in Accra, I've lived on many untarred roads. In Dakar, however, untarred streets have beach-like sand. So I almost only wear sneakers here because your feet will get dirty, especially if you're like me without a car and have to walk even two minutes to find a taxi. The whole city is also very dusty, much more than Accra, so expect to ramp up your cleaning schedule. And in the summer, there are so many flies, so I rarely open my windows that don't have a net. There's no Uber or Bolt or the like to go back to taxis, so you physically have to walk somewhere to get taxis. Consequently, I avoid certain bars and restaurants at night because they are not close to the main road. The absence of Uber, Bolt and the like also means expensive transportation. Luckily, I don't work a 9 to 5 that requires going into an office every day. If you do, you could easily spend 100,000 safer a month on transport to and from work alone because you'd be traveling at peak hours. And the taxi drivers will always try and rip you off by a ridiculous margin, i.e. the price is 2,500 safer but they will say it's 7,000. So it can become fatiguing to have to negotiate with multiple taxi drivers every day. Hence why I chose to live in a walkable part of town. While the internet generally works fine for me for streaming and video calls, every time I have to send large files, photos mainly because of my work, it takes much longer than it ever did in Accra. Something with orange, I guess.
Now, the more touchy side. I find Senegalese people significantly less jovial than any other West Africans I've met. Maybe it's because I don't speak Wolof, but they are very reserved, hard to read, and often non-reactive. Consequently, the nightlife is incomparable to Accra. People don't dance here as much. Maybe they do if you compare it to the West, but not compared to Ghanaians or Ivorians or Nigerians. Afrobeat is not as prevalent. Even at the recent Burner Boy concert, a whole Burner Boy, so many people were sitting throughout the concert. And Burner Boy even said at a point, Wahalao, when the crowd wasn't responding to him. Also, good customer service is few and far between. Ghana is similar in that regard though. Case in point, the place I actually reserved for my staycation, this place and this room in particular, was given to someone else. So I arrived and didn't have a room. I waited over three hours and did not even get a simple apology from the manager. Instead, she told me that sometimes we make our plans and God has other plans. I cackled. She seemed to have all the time in the world answering calls to chat, playing on her phone for everything but actually taking care of her guests. Where I ended up staying, which was perhaps a blessing in disguise, was actually someone's private house. For me, it was fine, but had I arrived with kids or maybe an elderly person, it would have been far from ideal to not be able to check in three plus hours after the check-in time I was given. The last thing is protests are pretty common here. On the one hand, it's great because it feels like they hold their leaders accountable, but coming from Ghana, where they are almost non-existent, it can feel like the inconveniences that come with protests, so roads being blocked, traffic, are a bit too frequent. That's it for me for now, but I'm curious for any foreigners living in Dakar, what have been the downsides for you? And for anyone considering moving, what are you curious about?